All right, let's take this opportunity to talk about the relationship between an actor and a director. Uh, Golden, Glo Golden Globe nominee Dennis Christopher said about you, she wants to know what director wants. Every director has a different approach, but they all want the same thing from you at the end of the day, a fantastic performance. You've actually directed a short film, and we'll discuss that in a moment here. Uh, but I want to ask you, you actually get to speak from both sides of the equation. What do you think promotes the most positive results in an actor's approach to receiving direction? Well, I've actually directed three short films, um, but uh, <laughs> um, and I and I did get to ghost direct a little bit on a feature, but I'll, I'll leave that out. Um, I um, I think when you're the actor, the trick is to listen and be open. And I would say that's true whether you're an actor at a job or you work at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. You have to listen and be open and uh i think one thing that and try stuff just try stuff dare to fail you know just do do whatever the director said to do just to get it done and then you can do it your way on the next take but um you're not the only authority on the character and i think a lot of actors get very bent on the idea of like but my character would never do that really because the writer said they would, so maybe <laughs> you don't know your character very well because the writer who spent maybe years working on this mm -hmm. says you would do that. And the director is directing you to do it. So instead of coming from a place of my character would never do that, you have to come from a place of why would my character do that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I like yeah. that. That's very good. And justify like it. You know, figure it out, do the work, that's acting. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, and there are other authorities as well. I write in my book, my book is very practical and it has lots and lots and lots of information in it for working actors. But you know, the makeup and wardrobe people might know more than you do about your character. I remember when I showed up for Queen Sugar and saw the wardrobe, I was like, oh, she's not who I had pictured her to be. She was who I thought she was as a person, but she wasn't who I had pictured her to be as a presentation of herself. Mm -hmm. And so rather than me tell, you know, wardrobe and hair and makeup that they don't know their jobs since they've been doing them for years before I come along, um, I thought, okay, so let me ask them questions about how they came to the conclusion that this is what she wears and this is how her makeup is. And this is how, you know, at some point they had me wearing like a jerry curl look. I have curly hair and they had me do a jerry curl look. And I thought, well, that's curious. I'm like one of three white people on this show and I have a jerry curl. <laughs> so, you know, would that have been my choice for that character? No, but then when I looked at where that character's coming from, I absolutely could see why that was her choice. Yeah, that's that's great advice. I mean, especially like when you're working on a set like, um, like Quentin Tarantino's where there's hundreds of people in the cast and crew if everybody like you have you have one person that wrote the recipe essentially and if people are veering off if the ingredients are getting you know it, it, it could easily throw off the whole cake I concur. well and that is one of the things though is that i've been blessed to work with people who really know their work and so it's better for me to question myself than them in that case if you're working with somebody you know like if you're working with student filmmakers or whatever i think it's okay to ask those questions but at the end of the day, even if you're working on a student film, the whole point of that would be to help them become better directors. Yeah. And uh, so just trampling all over somebody's ideas is not making them better at their job. That's a great, yeah, it's a great way to look at it. So now with the advantage of 25 years of practice under your belt, if you could send a message back to 30 year old Laura who's getting her first roles, what would your biggest critique be to that actor, actor. You know, I, I, I wrote it in my book that I think that this is the right answer to this because I have a lot of answers to that question and they change every day. Well, that's but awesome think... that you have multiple <laughs> answers for it. I mean, that means you're humble. <laughs> well, I, because I do, I think, I, I mean, the whole point of this, you know, journeys around the sun thing is, you know, that we call life is, is that you learn new stuff every time. My, mm -hmm. my mom compares it to climbing a mountain where uh, if, if the mountain's super steep, which, you know, 
I'm, I'm doing a job that less than 1% of people make enough money to survive. So I'm in the same group as Tom Cruise. So that's a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you're gonna climb a steep mountain, that if you're in a car and you're going up a, a really big tall mountain, you can't just go straight up the mountain. You have to drive around and around and around and around and around. So you might come to the Southeast corner again and be like, oh my God, I already saw this view. I already saw all this. And think life is just doing you the same over and over and over. But each time you're seeing it from a little higher, a little better perspective. Mm -hmm. And if you just remember that, that even though it seems like, oh my God, haven't I done this before? That each time you're coming from a little better perspective, a little higher, that that, that helps. So for me, the, the answer to your question today would be the lesson of the hundred auditions, <laughs> which, which I write a lot about in my book. Uh, the lesson of the hundred auditions is, is uh, basically the short end of it is that if I had known that the 104th commercial audition I went on would be the one that I would book, then wouldn't I at 97 auditions failing been like, woohoo, 97 is over. Get on, there's 98, bring on 98. And I wouldn't have been like, oh my God, 97 auditions and nothing. And this is not, I'm just not, you know, like I wouldn't have despaired. Yeah. So it's just the perspective of not knowing which one is going to be the one. That's where all the anxiety is coming from. It's not coming from whether or not you're good enough or all that. It's coming from not knowing which one's your job. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. It I does. Mean, it, it, yeah. Like you're working. It, it's, I guess it's easier in hindsight when you know that, that the, right. the light at the end of tun the tunnel was coming when you're in the thick of the tunnel, it's like complete darkness until bam, there it is. Right. What if you quit at 103 and you, and 104 was your magic number? Right. Yeah. That is, wow. Well, I think out of all the guests that we've interviewed, I think there's been one common theme and the thing and they all said in this industry, you all, you'll always get more no's than yes. So you got to keep getting your no's to get more yeses. So, I mean, you got to build them up. Build up your credit, people. Why don't you subscribe? It'll last longer. <laughs>